we have a charge of five micro coulombs and another charge of minus five micro coulombs so what do we know about opposite charges opposite charges attract right so the question 8.1 is saying that let's draw the resulting electric field pattern between the two charges so let's go ahead and do that so we have our positive electric charge and then if it is positive uh, the field lines should be pointing outwards so on the negatively charged sphere the field lines should be pointing inwards right that is always the case we must always remember that these two charges are not supposed to repel right they're supposed to attract instead so this is how we sort of yeah indicate that so we're gonna have a fold line like that we're gonna have another one like that and then lastly we're gonna have something like that so if you have two charges that are oppositely charged then the float lines will look something like that right and then moving to 8.2 so 8.2 is saying that let's calculate the electrostatic force that sphere x experiences due to the charge on sphere y right so we have 8.2 and we're looking for the electrostatic force we know fully well that the electrostatic force is equal to k q1 q2 divided by r squared so what is the value of k k is a constant right so we have 9 times 10 to the power 9 and then the value of q1 we have 5 times 10 to the minus 6 multiplied by 5 times 10 to the minus 6 everything divided by r squared so they are 0 0.04 meters apart from each other so we're gonna square that but then now the question you might be asking yourself why are we substituting 5 and not minus 5 for one of the spheres in electrostatic force the definition of Coulomb's law says that the electrostatic force is directly proportional to the product of the magnitude of the charges so we're only interested on the magnitude right? so this is going to be equals to so now it's just a matter of plugging that in your calculator and you should get 140.63 newtons right and then now uh, we can think about the direction right so we're looking for the electrostatic force that sphere x experiences because they're going to attract it means that sphere x is going to move towards y while y move towards x so we can see there that uh, the force of y on x will be to the right right so here our direction to the, our electrostatic force will be to the right if we're interested on the force on y by x it will be to the left instead right i hope uh, that is clear let's move to 8.3 and see what 8.3.1 says so 8.3.1 is saying that if c if sphere y is at a fixed position and sphere x is free to move will the acceleration experienced by sphere x towards sphere y be constant right down yes or no obviously it's not going to be constant right so we're going to say no it's no way it can be constant and then 8.3.2 we now have to explain why we say no or why we say yes if you had said yes <laughs> right so let's you know think about it they're saying that we must explain by referring to the electric field and the force so we know that uh, the electric field is equal to k q divided by r squared right and then we can see here that the electric field is inversely proportional to r squared right so the further away you move from the charge the less electric field there is right but at the same time we know that the electrostatic force is equal to the electric field multiplied by the charge you place in on that electric field so clearly if you change uh, the distance you change the electric field and if you change the electric field you change the electrostatic force so there's no way that the acceleration will be the same if we change in the force right because let's not forget that f net is equals to ma right this holds 
all the time you're dealing with charges you're dealing with messes this is true so if you change f net in some way or another the acceleration is going to change because we know fully well that uh, there's a relationship there between acceleration and f net they are directly proportional to each other right moving to 8.4 so we have 8.4 so 8.4 is saying that a third sphere z with a charge of minus 4 micro columns is placed at a right angles to sphere x at a distance of 0 0.03 meters from sphere x right then let's calculate the magnitude of the net force on sphere x due to sphere y and z so we're looking for yeah the overall you know magnitude of the net force on sphere x right so the way you start this problem you start with the you start with a vector diagram right so that you can sort of see what is happening so let's pair what in chain to z and x so z is negatively charged then x is positively charged so z is going to pull in is going to be pulling x towards itself while x is pulling z towards itself right that's attraction basically so the force of z on x is upwards because z is going to be pulling uh, x upwards right so yeah we're gonna have something like that so this is f z on x now let's look at x and y um we have a positive and a negative so x will be pulled by y towards the right while x is pulling y towards the left so if we're only interested on in what's happening to x then we're gonna have something of this manner so we have f y on x right so now that uh, we have this we can go ahead and calculate um, the magnitudes of uh, fx and fy right so we're gonna have fy being equal to so that is fz on x basically right yeah so we're gonna have k q1 q2 uh divided by some r squared so what is k constant again so we know that uh, we have 9 times 10 to the power of 9 then q1 like i said we are only interested in the magnitude right you determine the direction by doing what we just did here with the vectors here when you're calculating you just you know sub in um the charges without their magnitudes so let's go ahead and solve the problem we're gonna have four times ten to the minus six and then we're supposed to multiply that by five times ten to the minus uh six right and then we're gonna go ahead and divide everything by r squared so we have zero comma zero three meters we square that then if you pass that in your calculator you should get 200 newtons you know upwards yeah because we know fully well that it's supposed to be upwards right fz on x we have uh, proved that beyond a reasonable doubt and then fx fx we're gonna have kq1 q2 divided by r squared again so let's not copy the formula down again let's just go ahead and substitute so for k we have 9 times 10 to the power of 9 then q1 uh we have 5 times 10 to the minus 6 yeah we've already calculated this above right in 8.2 um, but it's fine let's just go ahead and finish it up so we have 5 times 10 to the minus 6 uh divided by divided by 0 0.04 squared so this will be equals to 140.63 newtons am i getting the same thing i'll call the first time let me just yeah um so now we can see that fr squared is equal to fx squared plus fy squared right so fr will be equal to the square root of so what is fx that is 140.63 we square that and then plus fy so that is 200 and we we, we square that and then when you pass that in your calculator uh, it will get 244.49 newtons, right? Uh, we're only looking for the magnitude of net force, so we don't have to determine the direction. And this is it for this question.